If you're a traveler, a cinematic filmmaker, a photographer, a YouTuber, or a combination of any of these, well then, this camera might be the next camera for you. Over the past three weeks now, I've been traveling through Indonesia and Thailand, putting the Nikon Z6 to the test. Leading up to this experience, I had never in my life shot with Nikon. So when they contacted me about a month and a half ago, offering to sponsor today's video, I was really excited to be able to try a new camera setup and to see if it could ever become part of my daily workflow. Now the first thing I want to establish is that there's going to be much more in-depth reviews on YouTube, but my goal is not to share with you all the nitty and gritty, but to share with you the real life application of using the Nikon Z6 on the road. So without further ado, let's get into the things that really matter. The first thing I want to talk about is what's actually in the Nikon Z6 filmmakers kit. The first thing is obviously the body. The second thing is this right here. This is a 24 to 70 f4 lens. It's super sharp, it's lightweight and portable. The 24 to 70 is an awesome lens, but it's a little too tight for vlogging, so I also went and purchased the 14 to 30 f4, and that is the lens that's currently on the camera right now. Not part of the filmmaker's kit, but a fantastic lens. The next thing is the Moza Air 2. This is a really great gimbal. It's fairly lightweight, it's fairly well powered, and it'll definitely do the trick if you take the time to well balance it. It has the Atmos Ninja 5, a 4K external monitor and recorder. It comes with an F-mount adapter so that you can use any of the old Nikon glass on the Z6. It comes with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, my favorite microphone. It auto powers on, it captures brilliant sound, and I have nothing more to say about it. And it comes with two batteries. As of today, this package is selling for 4,000 US dollars, which is roughly a saving of 1,200 US dollars on all of these bells and whistles included in the package. But let's say you're a photographer or you already own Nikon glass, maybe this package doesn't make sense. The body is currently selling at 1,700 US dollars, and that is a very, very good price for what you're getting. I will go as far as saying the Nikon Z6 is one of the best camera on the market, dollar for dollar. It's incredible value packaged into a small body. So let's talk about what I loved about this camera over my past two and a half, three weeks of shooting with it. Number one, this shoots 4K 30 and 4K 24 frames per second and the outcome is beautiful. The footage just looks good. It allows you to crop in with a 4K, but if you want to slow things down, you also have 1080, 120. One of my favorite features on a pro camera to be able to slow things down four or five times slower than real life. It is an absolutely beautiful thing. Now, arguably the best thing of all of this is that this is one of the few cameras on the market that has no crop in any of the record settings. Whether you're using 4K or slow-mo, you are getting the full full frame sensor. Inside that little body is five axis stabilization, which as a run and gun shooter, where I don't always have the time to set up a gimbal, that is a fantastic thing and it just makes the footage look better in body. One thing I really tested over the past few weeks has been low light capabilities and this Nikon Z6 is incredible for low light. I've been shooting with an F4 lens, which naturally is not going to be the top choice, but it's been able to power through it, being able to collect what little light it can take and compensating with ISO, it's been able to pull together a really good looking image. I've been very impressed. The camera is weatherproofed and water sealed and I actually went to a waterfall here in Bali and I'm very pleased to say it survived with no problems. On the contrary, Bali also tested its ability to manage heat and the camera never once overheated despite shooting 4K 30 for long periods of time. One thing I cannot praise enough is how good the camera feels in hand. It's just fun to use. It feels rugged, it feels durable. I love the feel of the camera. A really great feature that not enough cameras have these days is built-in intervalometers. So I can shoot time lapses as a video or as photos inside the camera. No need to attach a remote for that. That's an incredibly useful feature, especially as a travel vlogger. This camera is a hybrid beast quickly switch from video to photo with the flick of a switch on the back of the camera. I love that quick access to go between the two. And while I think the video was the strongest side of this camera, the photos are fantastic. They hold up in basically all situations. The colors are beautiful. The resolution is more than enough for 99% of us. Unless you're really blowing up an image, you'll probably want to look at the Nikon Z7. I'll also take a second to mention that the dynamic range on this camera is one of the better ones that I've seen. The ability to capture both the high 
highlights and the lowlights in a single frame and make it all a digestible image. That's the best way to describe it. And again, as a run and gun shooter where I don't always have perfect lighting conditions, it's great that I can be in midday sun and still pull together a really good looking video or photo. And this camera can shoot 12 photos a second like a little mini machine gun. The electronic viewfinder on this camera is fantastic. I never really used DVF until the Nikon Z6. It's so great for shooting in the bright sun. I don't have to look at the back of the screen. I can just look right in and it displays the image exactly as it will be. One thing people don't talk about enough in camera reviews is file size. And I've loved the fact that the file sizes on this are roughly a quarter of what I'm used to on my other cameras. I am seeing my data consumption drop significantly and the crazy thing is I'm filming in 4k 30 despite the higher resolution I'm still seeing my file sizes incredibly manageable size it's a huge bonus when everything needs to be saved onto hard drives or uploaded into the cloud and lastly the ninja 5 4k this external monitor and recorder is a powerhouse most people will probably just use it like I'm using it now to monitor themselves, which is great for tutorials or great if you want to have a bigger screen on the back of the gimbal. You can all attach that. The Filmmaker's Kit allows you to do that. But one of the powerful things that most people won't use unless they're entering into pro feature territory is the external recorder. Now, what that allows you to do is instead of filming in 4K 8-bit, which you can do inside the Z6, you can now attach the Atmos and record what is known as 10-bit. Basically, it just means that you have more of the color spectrum being saved on the file. It gives you more flexibility in post-production, but if you're not entering into cinema territory, this is kind of not really something most YouTubers will need. And Nikon has announced that an update is coming that will allow the Z6 along with the Atmos to be able to combine together and shoot in ProRes RAW, which is an extremely flat profile that allows you to get the most out of colors. This is Christian from the future, an exciting update, the ProRes RAW firmware has been released, so now you get these incredible pro level features that you typically only find on $15,000 or more camera bodies. So to have that in a body at this price point is out of this industry standard, never been done before, super exciting. Now will I be using ProRes RAW? The answer is honestly no, I won't be using it that often. It's a very pro level feature that I would only reserve for something like a special project or a documentary, but it's one of those things that it's great to have when you're making a sizable investment. The last thing is experience. And this is something you can't quantify, but it's something that's more emotional. And I found that this camera is intuitive. It's easy to use. You pick it up, you know where things are, you manage to get around the menu system really quickly, and it's ultimately a fun and easy to use professional tool that allowed me to keep up with my workflow. As much as I'd love to find the perfect camera, it doesn't exist. It's like a Pegasus or a unicorn. You can keep looking for it, but you probably will never find it. I wanted to be able to just turn the camera on and have it look at my face and boom, know that I was tack sharp focused. But I found that it missed focus on my face a few too many times. The autofocus is great, I don't want to confuse that. But the facial focus just simply lacked a bit of reliability. And with the lack of a flip screen and a wide angle lens in the filmmaker's kit, I would say that this camera is most powerful for the travel filmmakers who are primarily behind the camera. This is where the camera really shines, as a documentary grade camera in a portable lightweight body. Now Nikon does have the technology for a flip out screen because they've actually put it on their Z50, which is more of a lightweight vlog style camera to start with. So I'm not quite sure why it didn't make its way onto this one. I would have loved to have seen it. But my guess is that Nikon more focused the Z6 on the run and gun cinematic filmmaker rather than the vlogger. This right here is the 24 to 70. It's compact, it's lightweight, and the 14 to 30 that's currently on the camera is actually maybe even a little bit smaller. But one thing that might be a bit of a con is the fact that you have to pop it out to use it. So if I want to put the camera into use, I have to go from there to there to put it into 24 and then up to here for 70. So it stays compact, which is fantastic as a traveler, but in order to make it useful, you do have to do that little pop. Another con slash pro, it's a bit of both. It's the XQD card. No longer are you using SD cards. This is a very unique size shape card, but with that, it's also extremely reliable. One of the most reliable cards on the market, which is especially good when there's only a single card slot. It is also one of the fastest cards on the market. So if you're offloading your footage at the end of the day, it's gonna be blazing fast. But the con is that again, you're gonna have to invest in an XQD card, which doesn't come with the filmmaker's kit. 
for 128 gigabytes, you're looking around a couple hundred bucks for a high quality one. And you're also gonna have to buy a reader, probably 30 to $50 more. So it's another expense. It's another adapter to carry around. But if this is your go-to camera, you won't regret it in the long run. I am back with another firmware update, update. Basically, Nikon is now giving the Z6 and Z7 users the ability to insert and use the CF Express cards, which are another really fantastic memory card that are just incredibly fast, like blazing fast. Now, it's a good thing the Filmmaker's Kit comes with two batteries because the battery life on this camera is only average. Two batteries should get you through an average shoot day, but even three or four batteries would be a safe bet if you're planning to go real ham on the 4K and the long recordings. The Atmos Ninja does not come with an SSD, so if you wanna record the 10-bit, then you're going to need to buy yourself an SSD. Again, only if you're doing pro features will you need that. And the last con, at least as of today, is that the Nikkor lenses or the Z lenses are quite limited. They haven't been that quick to roll out their full lineup of lenses, but they are coming. And with that, you do have the F adapter, which comes with any of the Z6 cameras, whether you buy the camera alone or the filmmaker's kit, and that will allow you to access all of the old Nikon lenses. There's currently 360 lenses that are usable with the adapter. So the question you're probably asking yourself is, am I switching to Nikon? And you might be asking, what happened here? So is life as a new homeowner. We had our first leak. Kind of getting used to it. It's nice. Yes, it's a great vlog camera, but it's not the best. It's a fantastic cinema camera in a small body, and it also shoots beautiful photos. That's pretty much everything you could ask for. I have to carry around two cameras to do everything that I want to do. Not only is that expensive, but it basically requires to have two people on hand to work both of the cameras. There is a very major drawback for me personally because I have heavily invested in a competitor's glass. I cannot use those thousands and thousands of dollars of 2.8, 1.4 lenses on the Nikon body. I simply have two F4 lenses, which not to bash the F4 lenses, they're fantastic, but they simply can't create the same background blur that a 2.8 can. Now Nikon does have that glass available, I just don't personally own it. To answer the question, no, I will not be fully switching over to the Z6 today. Until I start to acquire more of the Nikkor glass, I will probably see this more as a backup camera that I travel with to get high quality cinematics from time lapses, gimbal footage because I don't need low aperture lenses when I'm using my gimbal. I'll also be using this a lot for the 4K uncropped, which is just fantastic. And the fact that I have this 14 to 30 lens is an absolute dream. I love the width of it. With that out of the way, who is this camera for? Because my shooting needs are very unique. With the filmmaker's kit being just shy of $4,000, by no means is it chump change. But one of the incredible things that the kit offers and that the Z6 offers is that it basically gives you everything that you need in one package, in one body. The entirety of the package and the camera body is giving you some of the best value on the market for your money. That right there is the best way to explain why this camera is so valuable and such an exciting piece of technology that I think will be a great fit for so many of you. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. A big thank you to Nikon for giving me the opportunity to try a new camera. And guys, I make a new video every single Saturday. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more travel and film. And guys, let's get lost again in the next one.